me was the whole notion that sampling is lazy. And I'm going to ask each of you to respond um, to that uh, notion. And you can speak from the uh, perspective of somebody who's been sampled or somebody who has sampled, or in Matt's case, somebody who's represented an artist who's been sampled and who's sampled as well. So we'll start with you, sir. Um, I think, first of all, sampling is, is not lazy. Uh, first of all, hip hop, as most people know, not everyone started with original musicians because, of course, the labels, independent labels, brought in session musicians to play. But obviously, if you're a kid growing up in the hood, wherever it might be, the Bronx, Brooklyn, not everyone's had access to musicians to pay to have them come in and play. So, from the DJ uh, element, finding a break on a record to spin back, which essentially created the loop. So when the machines were available, which you might not have even been able to afford, when you were able to go into a studio and pay for a session, you use a sampler. Uh, the whole basis of that, as I think John and Juice will describe with the Bomb Squad, as I, I remember a bit, you know, extremely well, even to this day, if I heard a Public Enemy record, I might still hear something that I didn't realize was in there 20 years ago. Um, the element of it being lazy, it's like, to me, I was even thinking about this morning, it's like a mosaic. Uh, you can look at the picture, but you might not exactly see everything the first time you look at it. So, would that be lazy? I think the orchestration of many different samples, as you might put into one record, takes a lot of skill. As you saw, the, the people digging through the records, that's what I remember doing many times, and spending a lot of money on records, like, oh my god, how much money do you have to spend? But essentially, you know, you might look at a drummer, you might buy a lot of drum records, uh, or different musicians like a Coltrane, or what have you. So, all of those elements that I can think of right now, in this little bit of time, to me, I don't look at that as being lazy. I think that's orchestration, uh, more of a composer like Quincy Jones, um, what Puffy ended up being, which people used to have problems with him, you know, he's not a real producer, well, he was orchestrated. Like, lastly, my, my producer I always looked up to, even to this day, is Dr. Dre, that's essentially what he is, he's not a musician, but when you hear a Dre record, I think everyone knows what to expect, so I don't think it's lazy. <laughs> The whole lazy thing, that's just crazy to me. The, uh, how is sampling any different than one artist influencing another artist? They may say that the sampling is lazy, but all of those artists were influenced by somebody else, and they took from their styles to be who they are. So I, I don't see lazy as part of it. It's just a difference than what they used to. It took all the good answers. <laughs> um, I have two sides to that. One, I do play instruments. I play five instruments, and I also sample. Now, as an unfortunate part of the movie, you didn't see my name up there on the bomb squad. I did all the scratches that you think Terminator X did, and um, I also did a couple of things. And that's you know that happens in this industry, but it happens to a lot of people. But uh, I also was one of the guys that brought a lot of the music. Uh, you never hear Hank Shockley say what samples he uses because he just doesn't know it. He wasn't doing it. Um, he was a, what I you would say he's an arranger. That's right. See, he's that arranger. He arranged samples. Now, nobody seemed to give a crap that um, Ray Parker Jr. sold a new drug by the news. So uh, those of us just seen. Now, the thing is, everybody takes riffs from somewhere else. Like, you know, you take a little bit of this riff. I remember somebody, I mean, I don't know. I've heard like pieces of riffs, like uh, Brazilian rhyme from Earth and Fire, the very last four beats. Um, actually, I should say four beats, the last two beats, there's four beats, depending on the time signature. Where, um, where it goes dum 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 and that little piece, and that was used right there for a whole different song. You probably heard the song called Get Up Stand Up, right? You know he got that, you know, my boy got that riff from sitting in the darkness on the wall, right? Right, right. So, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, you, you tend to forget about that, you know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of riffs that repeat itself. So, if you sample with that respect, then I would say, you know, it's not lazy. But as we all know, there's a lot of lazy people out there. So, yes, I can understand 
that one particular engineer saying that a lot of sampling is lazy, because in reality, a lot of sampling is lazy. You take a four-part loop and you just loop it and throw a kick and a snare on it. You know, and this is the funny thing, and I'm going to leave you with this. I have producers, well, they call themselves producers. And it's because they write a beat. Right? Matter of fact, they're not going to write anything, because Quincy Jones only wrote one song on Thriller, and that was P.Y.T. He wrote it with James Ingram. So he didn't write anything, but he produced the album. Now, when you look at what you do to produce a record, you're basically the director of a movie. You can't say you directed the movie if you didn't show up on the set. And that's another issue. But, you know, um, we get down to sampling, and you're going to sample something, you throw a drum beat underneath it, and all of a sudden it's yours, and you don't get right as credit to the original copyright on it. Well, if I took his beat and did that, they'd say, yo, you stole my beat. Oh, and I stole your beat. I just threw drums underneath your thing, like you did to the dude that you stole your shit from. <laughs> but you didn't steal it because it's creative, but I stole it. So keep that in mind next time you blame somebody else for stealing your beat, but you're not giving credit to the dude that wrote the shit you sampled. That's all I'm saying. So there's two sides of the equation. Because if I write something and somebody takes my shit, I'm suing it. Oh, and by the way, we're still paying legal fees for the samples on these movies. We have not received a dime from that album. So next time they'll say, you should make another record like that. Really? That's <laughs> So um, that's real. But the opposite side, you said, what about people that sample us? How do we balance that out? We promise not to sue anybody for the how old can you go samples that we got stolen from us. So it kind of balanced it out. So now we still get publishing for the stuff that we did. But as far as royalties in that record, yeah, good luck. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything to add. <laughs> that's something specific. But uh, no, I, don't, I agree. Sampling is not lazy. Um, I have clients as producers who are, I'll just reiterate, you know, not really producers, they're beat makers um, or track guys, but um, I think, you know, flip side, just to piggyback on what you were saying, you know, a, a guy who just takes a, a, a song or a loop and just uses that as the musical bed for, for a new record, that's kind of lazy. Um, but I think uh, as, as musicians, and you can correct me since you play instruments, but it's my understanding there's only really eight chords. Or, or eight, so, eight notes. So, so, yeah, so, so, so you can vary, there's different variations and artists influence different artists all the time. So I don't think it's lazy. I think there's a creative aspect too. Just to, you know, reiterate what the others have said. <laughs>